Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites? Apologize! No. Anyway, welcome to Season 4 of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Oh man. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Venom Vlog, and this is like my third time trying to record this because I go off on these tangents, so I'm going to try to keep it simple on this one. Uh, I get two, I get asked two questions over and over and over. I start, I'm starting to notice as my channel's growing and we're getting to that 2,000, you know, we got over 2,000 subscribers, which thank you all, uh, by the way, the very next episode is going to be my, you know, uh, symbiote challenge food thing that I filmed, um, and I filmed that like uh, two days ago or yesterday, and uh, and so that, I'm going to edit that and put that up for the next episode for episode 470. Um, so we will celebrate that. So I'm sorry. I just want to do these little episodes here to fill in so we can make that celebration on a, on a good number like 475. Uh, so that'll be the next episode. But for this one, I want to address these questions, like I said, that have been popping up in my comments left and right. And it's almost to now where they're just annoying. And I know there's a, like one or two people that's just trolling me. And that's fine. You know, it's like it's whatever. It comes with the territory as your channel grows. You start getting this kind of, uh, you know, reaction to stuff uh, where people come in and just try to poke fun at you and that's fine I don't mind that but there are some people who just start getting really aggressive and they're writing me on here and then when I don't respond to their comments which I'm uh, these two questions uh, you know if you notice I start hitting I hit the heart button on most comments in my comment section uh, that's just to let you know I read it and then I put the thumbs up as well and uh, and then sometimes I'll respond if I have time and everything so you know I try to at least do that the heart thing but these two questions I don't heart these questions I don't thumbs up these questions um, they're they're starting to get on my nerves and then there's a couple people who just ask me here on, on on YouTube then they'll ask me on Twitter and then they'll ask me on Instagram just you know DMs and stuff and it's starting to really uh, it's, it's you get you you won if you wanted to see my limit on tolerance uh, you've, you've crossed the line finally. Uh, so let's address these two questions real quick. The first question I get asked all the time is, what is this movie going to be rated? Uh, and, uh, and, and Carnage can only be done in rated R, so this movie has to be rated R or I won't go see it. Um, to answer the first part, what is this movie going to be rated? I'm pretty sure it's PG-13. I have no idea. I, I could be wrong, absolutely. But it makes no sense to change the movie from a PG-13 franchise that made them almost a billion dollars with the first Venom movie and make this one rated R. It makes no sense. So that leads to the second part where people go, well, of course it makes sense. You know, like Predator versus Alien, that the first one was rated PG-13 and the second one was rated R. It's like, yeah, but look how that worked out for them. That killed the franchise. Like whether you like the second one more or not, like I personally like the second one a little bit more uh, because it, the first one should have been rated R. I don't know why the first one was PG-13. Uh, but those are rated R franchises. Alien and Predator were both rated R franchises. So to make a PG-13 version seems silly to me anyway. Uh, but Venom, it started off as a PG-13 franchise. Morbius is a PG-13 franchise. And uh, and those are going to tie into Spider-Man now. So to make this movie rated R makes zero sense from that standpoint. Uh, so that's why I, I'm just telling you, prepare that this might just be a PG-13 movie. And you, you got to start preparing for that. I, we talked about season one leading up to the first movie in season two tempering your expectations people have unrealistic expectations every day especially fans entitled fans more than anyone uh, and people come in and they're like well i've been reading venom for two years so i want everything done my way and i another person i've been reading venom for 30 years and i want everything done my way i hate I hate that kind of thinking. Uh, I used to have that kind of thinking when I was younger and I know it comes with age and you kind of break through it. Hopefully you're supposed to break through it anyway. I do see some 40 year olds on YouTube that seem to still cry about stuff. Um, but this is like, you gotta, you gotta wipe your, that part of your, you gotta get rid of that type of thinking. It's not healthy in any way. To sit there and say Carnage can only be done in rated R, then you don't know who Carnage is. Like you've, then you've never experienced Carnage in your entire life <laughs> because Carnage has only been in two mature books ever. Mind Bomb and It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, those are two comic books. They're one-shot comic books, and they released in the 90s, and they were mature rated. Uh, and it's because there was some nudity in it, and then they got really psychological, and they went into the mind of a serial killer, and, and they showed you know a lot of blood. There's a lot of red. Kyle Hotz's artwork was amazing, and he went really abstract and like Arkham Asylum with it, which looked really cool. Um, those worked. Those worked for those types of stories. But outside of those two stories. Uh, so that's two, three percent, four percent of the the history of Carnage. If that, everything else Carnage has ever been in has been in a T-rated uh, video game, a T-rated cartoon, a T-rated uh, comic book. Uh, he's been his first appearance was in Spider-Man, which was not a horror book or it wasn't rated R or mature rated. It was uh, it was called Savage Genesis and. 
it, it wasn't hardcore at all. It, it just brought in carnage. They call, they said he was a serial killer. They said he killed a lot of people. And they show him, attempt to kill new people in the new book. And Spider-Man and Venom there are there to stop him. So to sit there and just and, and with a straight face say, you can only do carnage in rated R is the stupidest comment that could come out of your mouth regarding Venom and Carnage. Uh, because most of Carnage's history has been T-rated or PG-13. So uh, so yeah, you're just dead wrong on that one. So when I hear that argument, I go, you're wrong, you're just wrong. So uh, so yeah, so you know, embrace, it's okay to be wrong sometimes, embrace that, you know, hear my feedback that I'm giving you right now and, and look at the facts. The character has not been in, outside of two books, not been in any other mature rated stuff. So he's, the movie's chance are is gonna be PG-13 and you just gotta start being okay with that. Uh, because I see a lot of people who are like, I'm gonna boycott this movie if it's not rated R. We heard that with the first movie, and guess what? The first movie still made almost a billion dollars uh, with your boycott. So, you know, this this movie, this train's going to keep driving regardless, and everyone who's a Venom fan and Carnage fan who are just excited to see these characters, they're going to go see the movie. And anyone who's like a mass audience member who liked the first one and they're interested in seeing the second one or they're big Tom Hardy fans, they're going to go see the movie too. And this movie will probably still make a ton of money without, you know, rated R fans. And if you think every movie that's rated R that's comic book related is good, just go see Birds of Prey. Like, I didn't think that was that good of a movie, and I didn't think it needed to be rated R. If it was PG-13, they could have, I think they could have had more freedom to do fun stuff in PG-13. Instead, they try to go for that, like, edgy crap uh, and squeeze it into the Birds of Prey movie, and it just didn't work, uh, in, in my opinion. And that movie, you know, whether you're a fan of that movie or not, doesn't matter because it didn't make a lot of money, and it's losing money. So, uh, so again, you have to look at it from a business sense. Uh, so, I would say this movie is probably going to be PG-13. So get prepared that it's going to be PG-13. Uh, the second question I get asked all the time is, uh, is when is the teaser trailer coming out? Um, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't work for a trailer house. I don't have a connection to anybody that does. I don't know. I, just like you, look online and I wait for Trailer Tracker or whatever that Twitter account is that we followed for the first movie. Um, I just wait for them to post, hey, we got info on a Venom trailer. It'll be out next week. And that's when I find out when trailers come out. I don't care when trailers come out. I'm not like you guys who are like, I need I need it now, I need it now. It's like, would I like to see one? Sure, when it comes out, will, will I be excited? Absolutely, but I am not waking up every day going, is this the day the trailer comes out? Are we gonna find out today the trailer? I don't, it, I have a million other things I can make videos on for this show, so doing a trailer reaction is not like, I, you know, I'm not in a rush to do that at all. Uh, so, you know, when it comes, it comes. I, I saw theories. There's been a lot of people that theorize that we might get one for CinemaCon, but they came out today and Sony said they're not going to go to CinemaCon this year, which I think was March 31st through April 2nd. And some people were saying maybe we'll get a trailer then. But Sony officially squashed that by saying that they're not even attending CinemaCon this year, which is their second year in a row. And the reason is because they just don't have anything ready to show. I mean, like... Uh, Bloodshot, which comes out in two weeks, they're like, well, it's already out, so we don't need to promote that there uh, and show footage there. The movie's already going to be out. Um, so then we don't need to promote like this, uh, you know, Peter the Rabbit movie sequel they have coming out because we're still working on visual effects. And Morbius, still working on visual effects. Venom, still working on visual effects. Monster Hunter with Mila Jovic, still working on visual effects. So they don't really have anything to show, so it makes no sense to waste their money and time and buy flights and hotels to go to CinemaCon and show off you know, uh, half finished stuff. It doesn't make any sense. So they're not going. So now I would say the first Venom movie wrapped filming like first week of February of 2018. And within like a week and a half of that, we got a teaser trailer. Granted, it was a teaser trailer that made a lot of people upset because we didn't see Venom in it, or we barely saw the symbiote coming up during the MRI scene, um, but that was it. So I don't think people want a repeat of that, and I don't think Sony wants a repeat of that. I think if they put out a teaser this time, they want it to be like the Morbius teaser. They want to actually end by showing either a, a glimpse at Carnage or a, a shot of a, maybe the redesigned Venom, whatever. Like They're going to want to do something like that, so they're going to want to put more time into it. So uh, Bloodshot is a possibility, but I don't know how realistic of a possibility you know it could happen though i mean that's two weeks away and they you know visual po we in the last episode we talked about post-production they've been working on stuff already with dailies that were said being sent in during the filming so there's a chance they probably do have a trailer that they can cut together and probably already started working on it so it's it's possible um but i, I don't know you know so it's a uh, it's your guess as good as mine i would say bloodshot on march 13th that's when the movie comes out it's a Sony movie. There's a chance that could be a good place for the trailer, especially if they think Sony thinks that's going to be a big hit. But either way, even if they put that in front of the movie, they're still going to put it online too. So, and that's really what they care about is those online clicks and that that kind of that buzz and the trending and all that stuff. So, we'll see. But I don't know if they want Venom 2 trending more than Bloodshot because they do want to promote the Bloodshot movie as well. So, 
I don't know. It's a coin toss, but I would say that's not a bad guess. Uh, CinemaCon is out of, out of the bag now, so we can't, you know, uh, rely on CinemaCon for a teaser trailer. Um, and then I saw people saying that a full trailer might come out at Comic-Con because Comic-Con, as I said in previous episodes, it's uh, it happens the week of or leading the week leading up to Morbius releasing in the theaters. I think it's like a week before it. So chances are they're going to probably screen Morbius if they feel like doing that. Because I've been to screenings like for Judge or Dread, you know, that awesome you know, newer version of Dread that they did with Carl Urban. Um, I've been to screenings at Comic-Con where it's like a couple blocks away at the theater there. And they do these like, you know, fun little secret screenings. So there's a chance maybe they'll screen Morbius there to start getting buzz out there at Comic-Con uh, for the movie a week before it comes out and they'll tell people hey after you see it you can go online and tell people what you saw because it comes out in a week so you're you know uh, that's good publicity for us so it would be smart business wise to promote Morbius at Comic Con and if so they can also bring Venom there and do a one two punch um, and have Tom there do a panel do a Sony panel uh, talk about their version of the Marvel Universe that's just if they want to do it you know it's it's uh, so again it comes down to how much money they want to spend and what they how they want to promote this but I think those are all likely possibilities. So we'll see. We'll see what happens the week of Bloodshot coming out. It's just two weeks away. So we'll just, let's just be patient a little bit. Let's not lose our minds. Um, and uh, yeah, those questions, every time people ask, I don't even answer them anymore. Uh, or if I do respond, I just write shrug because yeah, I'm being honest. I, I don't know. <laughs> like I have no idea when the trailer's coming out. So if, for those of you who are asking me, uh, and I'm sure I'm still going to get people asking me from here on out because there are people who don't, who won't watch this episode. Uh, but I wanted to just address this the best I can. So that way you guys at least understood why I'm giving you answers I do. For the rated R thing, I, I hope I explained why I think it's going to be PG. 13 and why it most likely will be um, but then also with the trailer I just I just straight up don't know uh, you guys have better guesses than I do and you guys are the ones who mentioned bloodshot and I wasn't even thinking about bloodshot so I was like oh yeah I guess that would make sense and then someone said CinemaCon I was like oh yeah I forgot about CinemaCon so yeah I have so much else stuff on my plate right now that I, I'm I forget stuff so uh so yeah I don't know about the trailer but for the uh you know PG-13 prepare for that trailer I don't know we'll wait two weeks we'll see what happens at bloodshot if we don't get it then Hopefully we won't have to wait too much longer after that. Because um, it can also still release it during CinemaCon, the trailer, uh, and just not go to CinemaCon. I mean, releasing a trailer online, they don't need anyone's permission for it. They're just going to make sure and look that no one else is going to release stuff around that day or time. Um, and then and they're like, all right, we have a window here, three days. We'll put the trailer up on this Monday, and then by, and then we have all the way to Wednesday before you know another trailer comes out. So we have like two days of you know trending and, and promoting and stuff like that. So. You know, I don't think, I, that's how I always feel. I'm like, why spend the money to go to a show if you can just put it online for nothing and uh, and get people talking about it? And I think that's the, probably the smarter way to market something. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are of all this down below. Do you still think the movie's gonna be rated R? Are you gonna boycott the movie? If it isn't, like, let me know in the comments, I guess, <laughs> and, uh, and tell me why you, you're so stubborn on that. Um, but do prepare yourself that this is gonna be PG-13. And if it and is announced as PG-13, don't be bummed out by that. Like, like I said, you chances are most of the comics and cartoons and video games you've played that have Carnage in them, you've they've been T rated. So why are you mad for another T rated, you know, Carnage story? It just doesn't make any sense. So, but if if you think I'm out of line or you think I'm the crazy one, let me know in the comments down below. We'll continue our conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. I'll see you guys in the future. Peace.